Hispanic Heritage Month kicks off today. It runs through October 15th. The Big Ten Conference marking the occasion by celebrating the contributions by student athletes, coaches, administrators, and fans. And we are joining in that celebration. In honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, the Big Ten Network spotlights legendary figures in the conference's rich history. Aces are not the only thing Dolly Santana served at Minnesota. The 2015 Big Ten Player of the Year and a first-team All-American, Santana finished her career with 1,644 kills, 182 aces, and 1,280 digs, all of which rank in the top 10 in Minnesota history. In 2015 as a senior, the Puerto Rican outside hitter posted the most kills in a single game that season with 39 against Louisville. Santana also played for the Puerto Rican national team as she was part of the silver medal winning side at the 2016 Pan American Cup in Santo Domingo. Santana's alma mater in action on Big Ten Plus this weekend. A really good matchup with Creighton. We have five of the top 12 field hockey teams in the nation in action on Big Ten Plus this weekend. Some good soccer as well. Remember, Big Ten Plus delivers access to thousands of non-televised live events. Subscribe and stream today. The 17th-ranked Purdue volleyball team kicked off the two-day Boilermaker Challenge last night by blanking UCF. The Boilers rallied for the final six points of the third set to finish off the sweep. It was the fifth straight win for Purdue, which is back in action tonight against future Big Ten member USC, which took down Illinois. That gets us to our big interview. It is Purdue coach Dave Shondell, kind enough to join us on the day of a match. Coach, we really appreciate it. Let's just start with that win last night. It was awfully impressive. What stood out to you about your team? Well, I just thought we came out really ready to play, which is important. Uh, Central Florida is a great team. They came off a win off of Florida State, uh, a sweep, and we knew we had to be really ready to play. Uh, our ball control is outstanding. Our first ball contact, we put the ball right to our setter. We have a freshman setter that we're using right now. So when you can put the ball in her hands, it makes her job a lot easier. And then we kind of hit on all cylinders last night. So it was a, a really good win to, to start this weekend. I got to say, in watching the match, just kind of blown away by your outside hitters. I think everyone knows about Eva Hudson, just how good she was last year. But Chloe Coin is fabulous. How does their versatility help your team? Well, it's a dynamic duo for sure. And, and I think that the fact we can play them opposite one another, that one of them is always in the front row where our setter can get them the ball on the left side. But one of them also is coming out of the back row, flying from behind the, uh, the three meter line. So it kind of keeps defenses uh, balanced. They have to, they can't just load up on one particular person, not to mention the fact we got two middles that are playing well and an opposite freshman Grace Heaney out of Omaha, Nebraska, that's really coming into her own very early this season. You got USC tonight, as I mentioned. They are a perennial power. You've already played four ranked teams in the non-conference. Give us some insight into scheduling philosophy. We were talking a lot about football scheduling philosophy here. What's your non-conference scheduling philosophy, and particularly the fact that you clearly want to go out and challenge your team? Yeah, we thought we were going to have a really good team this season. Uh, last spring, we did lose a veteran setter, Meg Renner, who was going to be the person running the show for us, uh, tore her ACL in the last spring match of the season, so we had to scramble a little bit, and we picked somebody up off the portal, which was really good. Lauren Poulter is a great player that played at Denver University, but then lately our freshman, Taylor Anderson out of San Antonio, has stepped in, but we wanted to schedule tough. In the sport of volleyball, to make the NCAA tournament or to be seated, to host, all those things, comes down to the ever-so-powerful RPI. Yeah. And if you don't have a great RPI, you're not going to fare very well in hosting that first or second round. So we thought we'd be good enough to, to be challenged. And the first weekend, it, it looked like maybe we had made a big mistake. <laughs> but uh, lately, uh, we're starting to play better volleyball. And it's, it's starting to show pretty well. We talk about lately and uh, non-conference victories. You had a good win against Kentucky last week. And the celebration that you had afterwards. Oh, come on, Dave. Come on. All a little right. stiff. A <laughs> little stiff. I, I didn't get much, uh, much warning on that. I just thought we'd uh, t 
try to have some fun with the group. We've got a really young uh, volleyball team, and we're yeah. trying to keep them light and, and so forth. But uh, I really appreciate you showing that well, for I the national audience. Can. Yeah. Uh, who, <laughs> who teaches you these moves? Is it the team? Or I know you have three grown daughters. Are, are they, they helping you out? You know, are, are you going on social media? Yeah, I, I got most of my help moves? from an assistant coach that tries to get me in a lot of trouble from time to time. <laughs> so she thinks that's funny. And I think the players might have thought it was funny. But uh, uh, again, as a head coach that's as bald as I am, sometimes you got to bring a few things uh, out of your pocket to keep things moving in the right direction. You know, we had you on last year and we talked a little bit about your family. Uh, just for those who maybe weren't watching and shame on them and who don't know the story. <laughs> tell people about your father, Don. I mean, he had an amazing impact on the volleyball world. I think you could argue one of the most important figures in the rise of the sport, certainly the most important figure in the state of Indiana. Give us a sense of, of the impact that he had on the game and by extension on you. Sure, thanks, Dave. My, my father was a professor and a volleyball coach, the men's coach at Ball State University. Ball State started men's volleyball the same time UCLA did, the first two sports to start that. And Ball State being a teacher's college, we had a lot of the former players and a lot of people that had dad in class went on to stay in the game and teach and coach throughout the Midwest and throughout the country. There have been three Ball State alumni who have won national championships in the sport of women's volleyball, a couple more in men's volleyball. So uh, he kind of got it started there at Ball State. And, and of course, his three sons have all stayed in the game. And uh, my brother, younger brother, John, is my associate head coach. It's one of the best coaches in the business and has made a big difference in our program. Then my older brother, Steve, retired from Ball State University as a women's coach. But I, I just think his impact uh, spreads across the entire world. He's in every, every Hall of Fame that there is for the sport of volleyball. And, we're just very proud of what he did. And the greatest thing, Dave, is, is right before he passed away a couple of years ago, he could see the rise. Yeah. And if he would have been able to watch that match up in Nebraska when 92,003 people watched the volleyball match to break the world record for women's sports and see all, all across the country this year, records being broken for attendance in the sport of volleyball, I'm sure he's smiling very big right now. And of course, Purdue is a huge part of that, but you sold out 14 of your 15 home matches last year. You had a tremendous atmosphere last night. I know you expect it to be right. really good again tonight. And the Big Ten is kind of at the epicenter of, of what you're talking about. And yeah, your dad was such a crusader for the sport. And, and it's amazing. I know we certainly have kind of reaped the benefits of it as, as a network because people are so passionate about it and, and enjoy watching it and, and we're able to feature it. And the Big Ten only figures to get more popular here coach as it expands we had gala trubin on right. this week from usc you're playing the trojans tonight uh, give us a sense of kind of where you see big 10 volleyball going from what is already a position of strength well it's hard to believe it can be more competitive than what it has been but it's going to be because with usc and ucla washington oregon being perennial top 25 programs it just got tougher and, uh, you know, one of the things that we've been discussing is scheduling for the Big Ten and all these sports. But in volleyball, we've traditionally played 20 matches, 10 home and 10 away. And I think now that you add these super competitive teams, you're going to be playing a, a, a round robin for sure of 17 matches. And then the question is, do you play three more matches of, against Big Ten opponents or one? And, and I've been an advocate for just one. So you're not loading up completely on Big Ten powerhouses that you can go out and play teams with equal records as they equate to RPI that may not be quite as strong as an Oregon or a Penn State or Nebraska or Ohio State. So we'll see how that, that plays out, but it's certainly going to be a monster conference and it will get bigger and better and the fans will be very happy with the opportunity that they're going to have in the Big Ten. We are happy as well. And, yeah, as you say, I mean, there are just going to be so many big-time matches in Big Ten Volleyball. Again, there already you know, are. And, Dave, yeah. the thing that's important for you guys to know, the reason that the Big Ten has become such a power conference is because of the Big Ten Network. The Big Ten Network has been unbelievable for our sport. And uh, people across the country watch it. The high school and club players, every, every night they tune in to watch this network. And, uh, you know, we're getting the best players in the country. And I, I told you this before, when the Olympic team won their first gold medal, 12 of the 14 players were from the Big Ten. So it's a dominant conference, and it's going to continue to get better. 
Well, kind of you to say that, Coach. It's been a great partnership. We love volleyball here, and, and again, the fans love it. So it's, uh, it's a win-win for everyone. Dave Shandell, best of luck tonight going forward this season. I hope we get a chance to visit with you again later this year. Always a pleasure, Dave. Thank you. Again, that Boilermaker Challenge continues tonight in West Lafayette. First, it's Illinois taking on UCF, and then those Boilers facing USC. Women's volleyball powered by Unleaded 88 tonight only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app.